Hello friends, welcome back. Do you or someone you love with diabetes struggle with low blood sugars and the rebound highs? Do you find it impossible to not overtreat those bad lows? I certainly can relate. So please hang out with me so I can share my top eight hacks I use when treating my low blood sugars and preventing those rebound highs. Be sure to stay to the end where I bust a common myth about treating lows. So please remember though, this is my experience and not medical advice. I am certainly not a doctor. Low blood sugars are a scary thing and can lead to a medical emergency if untreated. So it's always better to overtreat than undertreat. So let's get to it. Tip number one, carry fast acting carbohydrate at all times. I learned this one the hard way and have found myself in some pretty scary situations over the years where I had no quick acting carb close by. I now carry a small amount of quick acting carb at all times. I also keep some in my car. This is important for me being a type one diabetic on insulin. It also prevents me from grabbing the wrong food to eat to treat lows, which can lead to overtreatment and delayed spikes in blood sugar later on. Tip number two, try to use fast acting measurable carb when treating low blood sugars. I personally use dextrose tabs to treat my low blood sugars and to more accurately bring my sugar levels into range on my continuous glucose monitor. Using dex tabs prevents me from overtreating because I can split them in half, providing me with two grams of carb versus four grams and it allows me to treat it more accurately. I find that using things like juice, pop, candy, other sweets, makes it very hard to limit the amount and almost always leads to rebound high blood sugars for me. Chocolate bars are great in a pinch, but contain fats, which lead to delayed spikes in blood sugar and overtreatment. But in a pinch, grab what you can. Tip number three, test, test, test. Preferably when not low, to determine how much a small amount of fast acting carb raises your blood sugar. With my own testing, I know exactly how much half a tablet, one, two, three tablets will raise my blood sugar. This allows me to take just enough to get my blood sugars back into that range on my CGM or continuous glucose monitor without rebounding too high and hopping onto that blood sugar roller coaster. Tip number four, don't always trust the continuous glucose monitor reading. If you use a CGM or a continuous glucose monitor, and it is reading low, but you feel fine, always double check with the glucometer. My experience, my CGM has misled me many times and can give false lows. This can happen for a number of reasons, but typically it happens when you're putting pressure on your sensor site. Sometimes at night, I'll get alarmed to wake up with a low because I've been lying on that side. So keep that in mind and always double check with how you feel with a glucometer check. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and let me know how you treat your low blood sugars or your loved ones treat their blood sugars. All right, stick with me till the end because I will bust a myth. Now for tip number five, understanding food on board, insulin on board, and previous exercise. I have learned myself that not all lows are created equal. If I have insulin on board and miscalculated my insulin to carb amount, sugar can drop really, really fast. Exercise, if I've done it recently or if I've done a really, really intense bout, can also cause a delayed and sudden drop in blood sugar. So I ask myself those questions. When did I eat last? Do I have insulin on board? Did I exercise? And if I've done any of those things and my sugar's dropping fast, I tend to treat it a little bit more aggressively. Like I say, test, test, test. And it's always better to overtreat than undertreat. Tip number six, set a timer after treating your low with quick carb. I don't know about you, my friends, but over the years, I've had some pretty serious lows. And that fight or flight response, especially in the middle of the night, when it kicks in, it kicks in hard. Not craving to eat everything in sight that contains sugar, it's impossible to resist. I often think that's how sharks must feel when they sense blood in the water. My partner will ask me if my sugar's okay or low when I'm found sort of gravitating and wandering over into the candy aisle at the grocery store, as you can see here. I found that taking only a prescribed amount of fast acting carb really, really difficult when you're really, really low. So now I take the prescribed amount that I figured out based on my blood sugars and I set a timer for 15 minutes. Timer goes off, the cravings to eat that carb usually goes away a little bit, it's a little less intense, and it just prevents me from overtreating. Trust me, my mom used to find like whole bags of cookies empty. Tip number seven, fine tune your overall diabetes management plan. Look at your numbers and readings or CGM data in my case and look for patterns. If I notice patterns or trends, like I'm always low at a certain time of day, I consider making changes to my diabetes plan. If you have a team, that's great, do that. If you're independent like I am, make those changes to prevent the lows from even happening in the first place. Tip number eight, protein, the ultimate stabilizer. As you can see here, I had a massive roller coaster blood sugar ride the other day. It was because I failed to consume basically dinner, which usually has protein, and I had popcorn instead. I failed to adjust for that, and then I ended up with up and down blood sugar readings for most of the night. The lows were really, really bad. 
because there's no protein digesting really slowly in my body to keep my blood sugars level. So protein is the ultimate stabilizer for blood sugars. All right, let's get to the myth busting. Back in the day, I was taught to treat blood sugars using the 15 gram rule. So eat 15 grams of quick acting carb, test 15 minutes later, repeat. So if you have type 1 diabetes, you probably have been told that too. And this standard is good advice, definitely. It's always safe to overtreat and undertreat any low blood sugar. But over my journey, which is my journey, not medical advice, I figured out that when I follow this for minor lows, let's say like a 3.8, hovering around the four mark, and I have some food on board, I haven't exercised, all those questions I asked, and I treat with 15 grams, I go too high. I don't want to go into the high levels on my CGM. I want to just get it bumped up into the normal range. So now I treat using a half tab or one tab or two tabs, depending on where I'm at, and I wait the 15 minutes to get my blood sugar up into that normal range. So that's just a tip I like to share. If you've enjoyed my video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And check out my latest video here on stress and blood sugar. Thanks for watching, and here's to keeping those blood sugars home in range.